I want to show you the sort of inspired business acumen that makes me a winner. Look at that. Goldfish. Gold mine, Terry. Gold mine. Terry McCann and Arthur Daly made one of the best partnerships on ITV. And how about this? We have filmed the guys together again for the first time since 1989. That's right, the real double act. The brilliant Dennis Waterman and my personal hero, the legendary George Cole. Hey, you don't want to miss this. Didn't know you had that kind of dough. I could have mugged you. Yeah, with well, your background, you probably would. You're a very lucky young man. It's not many employers will give you a second chance. No, but some of them would pay me wages, wouldn't they? You owe me 80 sols. And it's not as if you can't afford it, is it? Oh, what is? Well, it's just bits and bobs. I owe most of this. Yeah, 80 of it to me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey, I hope you don't think I've 4,000 yet. Don't bother to check it. Just routine, sir. That's a G up. I just don't want to see you on a scrap heap of life. Excuse me, sir. This is £120 light. Never. Uh, I'm afraid so, Mr Harney. <laughs> Happens to all of us, eh? Yes, Mr Harney. Mr Roo, nothing to do with you. When I heard they were making the show, I just had to get involved because Minder, for me, was one of the finest and funniest television dramas ever produced by ITV. Now, it started in 1979, it ran for 15 glorious years and was sold to 70 countries worldwide. It made television icons of its two leading characters. The dodgy dealing Arthur Daly and his hired muscle come gopher, Terry McCann. Do you know, it was one of the few things that would stop me going out at night with my mates. There with me, picture the scene, indoors, sat down, big muck of tea, feet up, click. It's Minder. I could be so good for you. We found it very, very easy to work together from right from day one, really. It was terrific. Well, we circled each other for about yeah. two or three days. Just a little sparring, see yeah, how it went. Yeah, yeah. And we realised we were both on the same wavelength. And he had the billing, so there's no fighting for the billing. <coughs> so that was all right. <laughs> but all I'm doing is sussing out the job market, all right? Job market? What, motorcycle messenger? Audio typist? Is that the limit of your aspirations? Listen, this isn't for you. This is for civilians. Workers. Listen, Arthur, I've had enough, right? Standing on the door in some Karzian act and lippy hooligans. Kung Fu kicks now it is. I'll tell you what, I've got a season ticket to the casualty ward. Barassic and all. Can't even get me best shoes out of Mendes. No, why didn't you say? Oh, look, that's a good one. Of course, Arthur Edward Daly would have described himself as a... Let's see, a successful pill of society businessman who owned a quality used car emporium in West London. But we all recognised him as a ducking and diving rascal who thought VAT meant vodka and tonic. 900, I said. Uh, excuse me? How big are you? Hey? Eh? I might have something for you. What are you? 6'4", 46 chest. Look at that. Could have been made for you. Savile Row. I'm just an ordinary painter. Oh, don't painters have suits? Don't they go out of an evening? Try it on. It's only 200 sobs. Uh, <laughs> what did you say? I said to you, 170 sobs. Who do you think I am? David Hockney? A footballer. No, he's much smaller than you. Now look, don't, don't drip paint over it, but have a butcher's at this. I don't think Arthur was a, 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 a petty criminal, and I don't think he was a villain either. I mean, he was a rogue. Opportunity is a fleeting thing. Remember Fleming when he discovered penicillin? He was up a ladder at the time, was he? I don't think anyone ever checked that. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. 150 sobs. This could be your lucky day. There is no need for that attitude, Terry. It's just that the gentry were well, different from the likes of you and... Well, from the likes of you. You say that again, can't you? Born into money and privilege, living off the bats of the likes of me. And it's people like you that keep them there. Terry, remember where you are. Good God, Harrods is only just around the corner. Well, that's the way it looked. he was written as a lovable, a lovable rogue. I mean, the scripts were wonderful. Dave, allow me one second to explain the nub of my proposal. Thank you. 
Now, your average punter comes in here, buys a drink, sits down at a table. What has he got to distract him? A fruit machine. He's left his newspaper at the office, he's read all the beer mats, and then suddenly he sees a sign. Winchester Waxworks. This way. I don't think there was a single episode that I am not proud of and happy about, which is quite something. We are standing not 20 yards away from a geezer who takes punters for 20 quid meals at seven ton a throw. You imagine, five bookings a week? Do you know what that comes to? Uh, 3,500. It was a rhetorical question. There's a trouble in this country today. You can't find a good, honest to God, decent, professional thief anymore. They're all gone to live in bloody Spain. I think one of my favourite lines was right at the beginning. Um, I said to Terry, I swear to you on my, mo my mother's grave. I did not know this, Terry. I swear I didn't. On my sainted mother's grave. Now, normally this would be OK for me, Arthur. But I happen to know that your old mum is alive and well and living in Frinton. Yeah, well, never mind that. I've got something else for you. Right up your street. For this, my son, you hardly need to get out of bed. Terry McCann was an ex-middleweight who'd done a couple of stretches inside before Arthur Daly put Terry on wages and gave him this set of wheels. And yes, this is the very car they used in Minder. Of course, Terry was still useful with his fists and a bit of a demon when it came to the ladies. But then who could resist this pulling machine, eh, girls? Terry was a nice guy who'd had some bad luck. He punched a couple of wrong people, got banged up, and he got hooked up with Arthur, who saved his bacon somewhere along the line. And then they just had this wonderful relationship. Now, I suggest you pack up your expensive pyjamas, courtesy of Big Spender Terry, and all the other gear, and we move out of this deluxe establishment into some humbler gaff. And where do you suggest? His little place. My... Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. No, no. I've... I've got a bit of, you know, tonight. I don't care if you've got a bit of a you-know with Miss World, Raquel Welsh and the entire Dagenham Gold Pipers. Tonight, Ernie is your house guest. I'm not sure that Terry being a ladies' man made it appealing for me. It was more the, the relationship with Arthur and, and there would be women involved. Hello, lover. Ah, hmm. oh, bad timing, eh? Well, um, Penny, this is Debbie. Just a friend. Just? I suppose Terry was one of the early lads, really. I mean, they'd always been there, but they were they were usually more criminal than Terry. Uh, Terry didn't want to go back to prison. He'd had that. He didn't want to do anything illegal, which was dangerous working with Arthur. Our son. <laughs> he thought of himself as a gunslinger, in a way, and that he had to clean up the town. And so every now and again he did put himself in situations which he needn't have been in, or Arthur got him into situations he needn't have been in. But luckily he could handle himself. <laughs> Early scripts were very, very gritty, were set in the gutter, were hard, with explosively funny moments. Wait a sec! Wait a sec! Wait a sec! What is this, Mark? Is a bleeding Queensbury? Yeah, and I think it's busted! Oh, my foot! It's all swollen up! I don't believe this. 